You need to know when to quit a relationship. I know you feel like he's the one and all, but I also know that when someone does not treat you right, then you need to do yourself a favor and get out of that situation. Hello, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Chingwe. And in today's video, I'm looking at the six things I consider red flags in a relationship. Especially if you consider that man someone you want to go the long term with or someone you want to get married to. Number one, a self-centered man. This is the kind of man who focuses on his own experiences, his own opinion, his own achievements without showing you any form of empathy. This is the kind of person that calls you on the phone and you talk for one hour and in that one hour he's just talking about himself, talking about his achievement, how he did this, how he did that. And there you are longing to be heard. It is supposed to be a communication, not a one-way traffic. It cannot be all about him every time. It's either his this, his car, his house. His... It's okay when people feel very comfortable about themselves. But when you go on and on and on about yourself alone, forgetting the fact that you are in a relationship with someone else, then it becomes a problem. Number two, overbearing mother influence. This is the kind of man that relies heavily on his mother for decision making and problem solving. Allowing his mother to have a significant say in his life decisions and even in your relationship. Fine, he has been with his mom all his life. You know, he's used to his mother and everything. But now he's a grown man and he wants to have a family of his own. So he needs to be able to minimize the interference of his mother in his own personal decisions, especially when he wants to build a family of his own. I believe in marriage based on biblical principles and one of those principles is that a man will leave his mother and father to cleave to his wife and they will become one. So having this excessive interference from his mother, it's a serious red flag. You need to bring his attention to it, look for a way to talk about it and if it persists, then you need to leave that situation as soon as possible because it's going to degenerate into other forms of control and other levels of interferences that you might not be able to control or you might not be able to handle. A man needs to be independent of his own opinions, values and morals in life. You can't be with a man who cannot take his stand in situations, who is always caught between his mother and his wife-to-be. That is not a good situation and that is a serious red flag you need to pay attention to. Remember, you cannot easily change a man. It is only God who can change a man. So it's better you talk to him now before you get married. Look for a way to make him realize that is not a good way to live, especially when he's planning to get married. Otherwise, consider living. Imagine he, he goes to work in the morning, he's stopping over at his mom before going to work. He's coming back in the evening, he's stopping over at his mom's before coming home. Weekend, Saturday, he's at his mom's. On Sunday, he's saying, let's go to my mother. I mean, I'm not saying you shouldn't visit or anything, but when it becomes too much, it is a serious red flag. Number three, a stingy man. Stinginess, especially on the part of a man, is a serious red flag and should not be ignored. Yes, I believe that a lady should be able to have her own money to spend and all of that. A lady should be able to have something of her own. But then a man is built to provide. A man is originally created to provide. So when a man does not provide, it becomes a problem. He can't be with a stingy man, a man who wants to give you money, maybe he wants to give you transport or anything and he's putting his hand in his pocket like five times before he brings out money to give to you. Or he wants to give you money and then he turns his back on you to open his wallet to give you money. I mean, come on, that is an akagom. That is what we call a very stingy person in Igbo language, okay? You can't be with a person like that. He is so stingy. It might sound funny and everything right now, but it's a very serious red flag and you need to pay attention to it. Because if you intend to marry this man, when it comes to marriage, sometimes you're giving zero and your partner is giving 100%. So you cannot afford to be with a very stingy man. A stingy man will go any length to try to defend the way he's behaving, his behavior and all of that, but it doesn't make it right. You deserve to be with a provider who doesn't 
who want to relax and be taken care of. I mean, a provider is very easy to love. A provider is very easy to submit to. When he's around, there's just so much of everything. You know, there's he's not stingy. He doesn't hold back. I'm not saying he should spend all of his money on frivolities and all, no. But at least he's not stingy. It makes it easy for you to submit to a man like this. It makes it easy for you to respect him and to love him because he's a man and he's a provider. Number four, a control freak. Run away from a control freak as fast as your legs can carry you. This is a kind of man that monitors your every move. He is somebody who is always on your phone, checking your messages, checking your every move. When you tell him you're going to the salon, he sends someone to check if you're truly at the salon. When you tell him you want to go shopping, he sends someone to follow you. I mean, being with a man who wants to control you in all levels can be very frustrating. You need to be a woman of your own and to achieve that, you cannot be with a control freak. Someone who is so insecure in himself that he monitors your every move. He's not secured. He needs to work on himself. He's so insecure that he can't even trust you. Like he's always checking on your every move. He doesn't have any business being in a relationship right now. He needs to just take a break and work on himself because that is like a disaster waiting to happen. Eventually, you're going to get tired of being controlled or being boxed here and there and you're going to fight back and it doesn't always end well. Number five, an abusive man. Now, when it comes to abuse, it's not just about the physical aspect. We have the verbal abuse. We have the emotional abuse. A man who, he might not hit you physically but he would insult you you know he's he would tell you things that will make you feel so bad about yourself and you can even lose your self-esteem in the process that is an abusive man you need to look out for such a person and then for um a physically abusive man someone who he might not be hitting you but when he gets angry he breaks things around if he's holding his phone he smashes his phone on the floor he can break his TV screen. He can, you know, do things, very aggressive things around you. I'm telling you sooner or later, he's going to hit you. Because when he looks around and doesn't find anything to smash or just, you know, hit against the floor, he's going to look at you and he's going to hit you. So you need to be careful. You need to pay attention to this character. If he's abusive, whether emotionally, sometimes he won't talk to you for days. You will call him on the phone. He won't pick the phone. He won't talk to you for three days for one week and then he comes back after a while and he's like all oh, lovey dovey no that is emotional abuse because before he comes around you would have gone through hell imagine someone you're trying to reach and he's not talking to you for days for weeks for months so you need to pay attention to that kind of behavior that is abuse and it's not something you like to live with remember like i said you cannot change anybody so it's better you you're careful Look at this situation. See if he can get help. See if you can help him with this behavior. And if you cannot, then it's better you wait for that person. I am sure there is one person out there in the world who would love you the way you should be loved. And number six, a man with no spiritual standard. This is a danger waiting to happen. Every man needs to have spiritual standard. You can't tell me that, yeah, he's not that spiritual. He's not, he's not a spiritual kind of person. He doesn't really pay attention to all these things. No, except you don't want to get married to this man or, or if he's someone you don't consider me being with for the long term. But if you consider him as a future husband, then he needs to be someone who has a spiritual standard. Because like they say, if you don't stand for something, you're going to fall for anything. Imagine a man who does not believe in maybe Christianity, he does not believe in Islam, he does not believe in this, he does not believe in anything. And then when real life challenges come, what is going to happen? He would yield to anything that comes his way. And that is a dangerous thing. Regardless of what he believes in, as long as he has a spiritual standard, it is not left for you to decide if you want to be with him or not but my own point is that i believe that every man every matured man who intends to get married should have a spiritual standard it shouldn't be someone that can be tossed here and there and everywhere and can move with every wave that comes your way that is a wrong way to live biblically a man is a priest of the family if he doesn't have any spiritual standing how is he supposed to be the priest of the family 
Because the truth of the matter is, when when it comes to relationship, relationships are simpler. But when it comes to marriage, marriage can be very complex. Real life challenges can come on and it will test you to your core. He, the man, needs to have a spiritual standing so that when these situations happen or these real life challenges occur, you would know what you want to collectively hold on to and you know how to pray or how to go about it. In conclusion, I believe that every one of us on earth is flawed in one way or the other. We are all living with flaws, you know, within us and we can't help it. That is just the way it is. But there are flaws that can be lived with and there are flaws that we cannot live with. So these are some of the things that I have been able to put together because I believe that these are serious red flags and they can be life-threatening. Okay, so and especially when you want to go into marriage, like I said, these are things you should seriously pay attention to because no matter how how you want to trivialize it right now, it's something that can be magnified in the future and then when it begins to manifest, you might not like the outcome. What's the essence of getting married and then rushing out of the marriage because of one thing or the other? It's best for you to just pay attention to it right now. You have to sit within yourself, decide if it is something you can live with or not. Otherwise, you need to end relationships like that and believe that that man who that person who is ready i believe that there is someone for everyone wait for that man who is ready a man who is stingy self-centered relies heavily on his mother for everything is not ready he's not ready to be independent he's not ready to be a man yet so you need to wait for that man who is ready and who can love you and treat you exactly the way you deserve to be loved and treated. Thank you for tuning in and watching to this point. If you found value in this video, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't done so yet. Thank you so much once more. Stay blessed and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.